Ready? Hola and welcome back. I'm Tony and this is my dog, Honey, Princess Honey, and I have my other dog, Shelly, down here. So, this video is one that I've been wanting to make for quite a while, but I wasn't really sure how to go about it. To be honest with you, I still don't know how to go about it. It's a pretty touchy subject and there are so many ways to offend people with this subject. I know that back in the day I kind of would have been offended by it. It's, it's kind of a hard one. It really is because it's about a subject that so many of us are just just don't want to talk about it. And that subject is our weight. Plain and simple, it's our weight. And this video specifically are about the excuses that I gave myself to not confront my problem and not make myself lose a weight. We all have excuses. We all do. And our weight is that one subject that people, you just, you got to be careful about it. We have to get to that point when we make that decision of, okay, you know what? I'm ready. I am ready to tackle this problem. I am ready to do something about it. You cannot force someone to do it because then their heart's not in it and they'll just go back to the old habits, to the bad habits. And that's pretty much the overlying, I guess, message in this video is it's bad habits that have gotten us to this point. For the most part, growing up, I really didn't have a problem with weight. I was a very solid girl. I was very athletic. I loved to work out. I did all that stuff. And I didn't have a problem until I had my first child. I went from like 130, 40 pounds to about 170 with my son. But I, I was still okay with the way I looked. I liked the way I looked. I was all right with it. I was good. But then when I had my daughter in my mid-30s, I had my son when I was 27. When I had my daughter in my mid-30s, I just ballooned after that. And I added more excuses to my problem. I remember when I hit 40, I tried losing weight because I told myself, I don't want to go through my 40s fat. And I didn't lose the weight. Every year, I would just it just got worse and worse and worse. And it wasn't until it really affected my health that I finally started doing something about it. I was 48, 47, just getting ready to turn 48 when I finally did something about the problem. I'm 49 now, so this can be done. You know, you shouldn't let age be an issue. But anyway, these are my excuses that I gave myself as to why I didn't lose weight. I do want to say that when I started on this keto journey a year and a half ago at the beginning of 2017, what really got me was the fact that I'd gotten to the point where my health had gotten so bad, I was having problems breathing. I It was hard, it was horrible. And there was a point where I hit that I told myself, if I don't wake up in the morning, I will not be shocked. I'll be dead, so of course I won't be shocked. But you know what I mean, y'all know what I mean. And that was hard. You know, we always tell ourselves, you know what, I don't care, I don't care. We all die someday, but when you actually start to have problems and realize, oh my God, I could die, that really puts in a whole new perspective and that pushed me to do it. So what I did was I started, I started a blog, which I will put the link down below. And I basically had the year of accountability. I had hit that point where I had to take a long, hard look at myself, my habits, what was I doing to myself? Because honestly, I did this to myself. I did this to myself. Nobody forced this food down my throat. Okay, maybe when I was younger, maybe when we were all younger, we got told, eat everything on your plate, eat everything on your plate. And our family showed love by food and that sort of stuff. But you know, once I become an adult, I could have done things to change those habits and I didn't. I just kept feeding into it. So, the year of accountability. Took a long, hard look at myself and made myself faithful face facts and I started to change my life because I realized nothing was going to change unless I made those changes to better myself. I kept telling myself, you know what? It's genetics. It's just my body type. Everyone in my family is overweight or this does run in my family. It, it's just me. It, I was made this way. 
this was inevitable. It was going to happen. So I just went with it. I have a slow metabolism. How many times do we tell ourselves that? Okay. Maybe genetically we are meant to be this way. Maybe I am big boned. Maybe I do have a slow metabolism, but that doesn't mean that I shouldn't try <laughs> to better my health and my body. And what I've learned in this journey is it's not so much about the weight, the number on the scale and trying to get as small as I can. It's about making these changes to my eating habits and changing it from within to make myself feel better. Because the best part of this whole journey isn't losing the weight. Losing weight's great, don't get me wrong. But I feel so good, I feel alive now. I've always had stomach problems. Like I've said that in my past videos, always have had stomach problems since I was a little girl to the point that it changed the way I lived. You know, I didn't like going out to eat. I hated going to parties that were centered around food. If I ate, I ate close at home because, oh my gosh, what if I get sick? I wanted to be close to home. And so I didn't do a lot of things. I hated traveling because of it. And this has changed it. I don't have stomach issues anymore. The only time my stomach issues is because I have the flu or, or my sinus drainage or something like that, you know, other things. But it's amazing. Health-wise, I have never felt this good. Never felt this good. Another excuse that I gave myself is I don't have time. I'm a single mom. Yeah, I was a single mom. And I was like, you know what? I am a single mom. I don't have time for it. And then once I got married, then I was like, oh, well, now I have a family to deal with. I have a husband in addition to my son now. And then when I had another kid, I was like, now I have more kids. And I realized, you know what? I had to find the time. I had to find the time. I, at one point, started doing yoga. And that meant getting up an extra 15 minutes early or maybe spend the last 15 minutes of my day doing yoga. I learned how to do things in bed, believe it or not. And if I can find those videos, I'll link them down below. But I had to find the time because I realized I had to make an investment in myself. And maybe that meant I took 15 minutes off from watching a video or 15 minutes not playing a game or not watching a TV show. I had to invest myself because what we need to realize is you are investing in yourself. Nobody's going to take care of you the way you take care of yourself. I tell people that all the time. So make the time and invest in yourself. Start out slow. I mean, I was so fat. I wore like a size 22. I, was, I actually had to buy some 24s and I hated that fact. That was part of what made me lose the weight too. was like, I don't want a 24 because really it's hard to buy clothes above that size in the regular stores. So anyway, so it was really hard for me to bend over because I felt like I was going to pass out every time I bent over. And so I had to slowly start at it, but I kept at it. And I was amazed within a couple of months of how I was able to get into these poses better and how I was able to touch my toes. And I was actually very flexible. I didn't realize that, but it took some time. Don't think that right away you're going to be able to get into these poses. No, you're going to have to work at it, but you're going to get there. Trust me, you will. Next, I'm old. I'm old, I can't do this at this point. I am old. <laughs> I'm in my late 40s. And what I love about keto is, honestly, really haven't exercised. Done some yoga, but I really haven't gone to the gym. I haven't been running. I haven't done weightlifting. I haven't done any of that. Just with diet alone, I was able to lose all this weight. Okay, so if you got bad knees and you can't run, or I've got a bad spine, or I have problems with my neck and spine, okay? All these reasons why you can't exercise, okay, but you can control what you put in your mouth. That's what I love about keto. It's all about the food. And you can lose so much just by watching what you eat and controlling what you eat. That's the thing right there, you need to control it. Some people say they can't lose the weight because of health conditions. Maybe there are medications that make you gain weight, and it does do that. There are medications out there that make you gain the weight. Uh, I'm diabetic. I've been told by some people I can't do keto because I'm, di I'm diabetic, which, okay, I get that. I do, but actually the keto diet is actually really good for diabetics, and I'm not a doctor. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm nothing like that, but you know what? Talk to your doctor. Talk to your doctor. There are doctors out there who don't like keto. And there are doctors out there who do like keto. Find the right doctor. My husband is diabetic. 
And the problem with diabetics is that because you're cutting out all the sugar and everything and you start losing the weight, it's going to affect your medication, especially if you're on insulin, because you're gonna start all of a sudden, your blood sugars are gonna get low and if you're taking the same medication, whoosh, you're gonna crash. So talk to your doctor. They went with my husband and they changed his medication and told him what to do if he started getting low again because it will happen because your blood sugars are gonna start getting in line to where they want it. If you're really serious about it and you do have a health condition, talk to your doctor. Like I said, some, some doctors out there don't believe in it because they were taught this Western medicine that this is how it is, you know, fats and sodium and all that sort of stuff and you need to avoid this and that. And what we're realizing is that it's not really what they were taught. There is another way of eating that totally goes against what they were taught. There is a, um, there's a video on Netflix and it's called The Magic Pill. And it's actually really interesting. And it talks about keto. And one of the whole thing that gets me is that they went to, I think it was Australia, and they went to this tribe of people. And these people are known to be one of the oldest tribes that are still around. And what they realized is that these people lived for a long, long time and they were so healthy. They were so healthy, but now they're not. They're not living to be as old as they used to be. The diabetes runs rampant in this tribe. And they're realizing that when they used to eat the way that they used to back in the day, they lived a long time and they were extremely healthy. But then the Western civilization came and brought fast food, brought soda, brought bad eating habits, and these people took on those bad habits, and that's when you start again all these health problems. If you can, go watch that documentary. It's actually very eye-opening, and it's like I tell people, I don't care how you lose the weight. Do it with keto, do it with Weight Watchers, do it with going to the gym and cutting back calories or cutting off fats, however you're gonna do it, but do it for yourself. Do it for yourself. You you deserve to be healthy. You deserve to enjoy life. And that's the whole thing is, you know what? I was fat. I was fat. And I was like, I'm happy with the way I am. And for the most part, I was. But I had issues that kept me from fully enjoying life. And it was because of those issues and the fact that I couldn't do certain things that I wasn't enjoying life the way I thought I could. And now that I'm eating better and I'm healthier and I'm able to do all this stuff, I realize now I'm enjoying life. I was just existing before. I was just existing. I wasn't really enjoying it. And now, now I'm good. Some people say, because of money, I can't afford all that food you eat on keto. You know, it's not special food that you're buying. You're cutting out certain things. I tell people when you go grocery shopping, shop the perimeter of the store. You know, the, the vegetables, the um, the meats, the dairy, all that, that outside. Don't do the aisles because that's all processed food and that is not good for you. And once you start actually spending your money on what you should be eating, you kind of realize it kind of balances out. Yeah, you're going to spend money if you're going to go do like the Atkin bars or the special protein shakes or... You know, my MCT oil is not cheap, but I don't eat as much snacky foods. Like, well, actually, I don't eat snacky foods like I used to. The money I would have spent on chips and pop and Big Macs, I now use towards my MCT oil. So it's uh, think of it as a reallocation of funds, okay? But also, you're doing it for you, but if you have kids, you know what? You're going to teach your kids healthy habits. You're going to teach them what they should be eating because... You want them eventually to start eating healthier. It starts with you. Your kids start. If your kids see you doing it, then they're going to eventually do it. So it's an investment in them too. When you think about it, I think the biggest excuse that I gave myself was was pretty much that I'm happy the way I am. I was happy the way I am, and if you don't like me the way I am, fat, then I'm sorry. I don't care. Which you should never judge somebody because of how much they weigh. You shouldn't. Get to know the person inside. That is the most important part. 
But for me personally, I hated the fact that I couldn't bend over without feeling like I was going to pass out. I couldn't put on my shoes the normal way. I kind of had to do that thing where I kind of had to bend and put my shoe on that way. I hated clothes shopping. Nothing fit right. And the thing was, I wasn't like your typical overweight woman who had big boobs. I had small boobs. I still have small boobs. So when you start buying plus size shirts, they're made for these big breasted women. So I had a hard time even then buying oversized clothes. I hated the fact that if I went to a carnival, I couldn't get on a ride with my kid because I weighed too much and I knew that bar was not going to fit over me. It was hard for me to walk. I did that really slow walk that overweight people do. And I didn't really realize it until a few months ago because I saw somebody and they were walking really slow. And I remember somebody said something once about me and how I was walking slow. And like it clicked with me and I went, oh my God. Now... I walk a lot faster, you know, because it's, I don't have all that weight weighing me down pretty much. Who wants to face the fact that they're overweight? Come on, we'll just eat some food and I'll feel better about it. And I think that's part of the thing is we put so much into food. As a culture, we've built holidays around it. That's how we show love. You know, you go over somewhere and here, eat. I'm showing you my love by giving you this food that I made just for you. For celebrations, we have cakes and brownies and cookies. We build get-togethers over food, around food. It's, it's so easy to just be comforted by the food. That was my big thing. You know, if I had a bad day, I would go and eat something that made me feel good Cheesecake was awesome, by the way. If I had a really great day, I went and celebrated. Cheesecake was great for that, too. If I was feeling sorry for myself, well, cheesecake. I had a lot of cheesecake. There were times where, and I feel really embarrassed admitting this, but I know I'm not the only one because when I did say it to someone once they were like, oh my gosh, I thought I was the only one that did that. If I was having a really bad day, I would eat. I was a stress eater. I've always been a stress eater. I'm still dealing with that to this day. But I would leave work. And I would when I would leave, we have a McDonald's right on the way out. So I would go in and get me like a number one, Big Mac fries and a Coke. And then there's a Burger King right next door. And I would get me... I love their chicken sandwiches, the oblong one. I'll get me one of those. And I get on the freeway and I would eat the Big Mac because Big Macs are messy. I would eat that in the car before I got started driving. But on the way home, I'd be eating a chicken sandwich, be eating my french fries, portable food. In and out, when you go order a hamburger in and out, they ask you, do you want it in a bag or do they'll set it up for you so you can eat and drive. It's like, wow, that's convenient. But I would eat that food and then when about 10 minutes later, if I was still hungry, which I usually was, I would pull into Wendy's and get me a single with cheese, no onions. And by the time I came home, there were times where I would be eating a chicken sandwich and two hamburgers along with a fries and Coke. That is a lot of calories, a lot of fat, a lot of carbs. But I felt better when I was done. I had indigestion, but my soul felt better. That's what I mean by it. My soul felt better. If I had a good day, hey, guess what? I'm going to pick up that. Oh, Fry's has this um, cheesecake, strawberry cheesecake. Oh, I could eat the entire thing. And it's one of those tall cheesecakes with like um, chocolate Grizzled on it. Oh, it's amazing. It's it's amazing. And I would eat pretty much the whole thing over the course of maybe two, three days. We are a society where we use food to cure everything. Every feeling you have, you can use food to make you feel better in a way about it. But there comes a time where you can't bend over to tie your shoes. There comes a time when you can't bend over and pick a piece of paper. 
comes a time when you sit on a chair and you hear it crick and you're like, oh my gosh, this thing is going to break on me. Fortunately for me, there came that time where I realized I can do something about it. I went to the doctor and I told him, Doc, I'm having problems breathing. I'm having problems making it through the day at work. I'm exhausted. I hear myself wheezing. And my doctor prescribed medication for me and I looked at him and I went, you know, I kind of figured you would have told me that I had to lose the weight. And he told me, Tony, nobody wants to hear. You need to lose the weight. Everybody wants medication. They want a pill. And I'm like, Doc, tell me I need to lose the weight. He told me that. I was like, okay. Like this light went off in my head and I realized, you know, I'm done with pills. I was taking all this medication. I was having problems doing a basic bodily function. Breathing was hard. And so I researched so many different ways to lose weight. And the keto made the most sense to me. But it also was hard. And I found this group on Facebook that explained it really, really well. And like a light went off there. And I was like, okay, let's try it. I made, search, I made sure I researched it and I had a game plan before I started it. And I started it. And it changed my life. I'm a totally different person now. I know that I will most likely see my daughter graduate high school and college. If she chooses to go to college, I will see my son graduate college. I will be there when he gets married and for, for, I will be there to see my grandchildren. I will grow old with my husband. My husband's doing keto too. So there's a really good chance we'll grow old together. It's like all of a sudden this whole new world of possibilities are there. I'm a stress eater. I am. I have issues with it to the state. I'm not going to lie. And sometimes I fall off the wagon. I did really good for like the first 10 months on keto. I did not cheat at all. But once I started letting myself eat a little bit more, that's when it got harder. And so I really got to get back to that point where I'm, I'm not cheating. But the thing is, I know that I can get right back up and continue with it. That's the thing is I know I can move on. I don't de admit defeat and say that's it and just go back and never try ever again. I'm going to try. We're human. It takes a while to develop healthy habits and I've developed some pretty good ones. I have. And what really helps is when I have you guys message me going, Tony, I started and I've done this and now I'm able to do this. And you know, when they tell me that they've encouraged other people to do it, it's, it's really amazing what a community we can make here. So if you identify with any of the excuses that I've given here, comment down below and tell me what you've done to try and change those bad habits. If there's an excuse that I didn't give, comment that down below. And let's see if we can't encourage each other to better ourselves. Because basically that's what we're doing. We're bettering ourselves. Remember, it's like I said, no one's going to take care of you the way you take care of yourself. So let's do this. I know we got this. And I'll see you guys next time.